Hello game trollers and welcome to another video and uh, some more Star Trek in the background because uh, it's the closest thing I have to Doctor Who and uh, today we're doing something not on uh, series 12 we're instead doing all of Doctor Who and this is my top 10 underrated stories in Doctor Who both from the new Who and the classics uh, disclaimers out of the way. First off, I haven't seen every classic Doctor Who story, and I've especially not seen uh, a, a good bit of the ones that people think are garbage. Um, <laughs> so, like, I haven't seen any of, like, Sylvester Mc... Well, I have seen, like, Dragonfire. That wasn't that bad, but it was still kind of bad. Um, but I haven't seen most of Sylvester McCoy's first season. I haven't seen, like... I haven't seen a good amount of like Pertwee or Hartnell or Troutland and stuff like that so I haven't seen all of Classic Who um, but I feel like I've seen enough to where this list is kind of valid and um, yeah also disclaimer minor spoilers I'm not gonna go too in-depth uh, in this one I'm just gonna kinda just do a list um, and just kind of explain why I think it's underrated. So, uh, kind of tied at uh, the same place, but still it's 9 and 10. Uh, number 10, we have Gridlock, and number 9, we have Amy's Choice. Now, I'm putting these at this number, at these numbers, because they're not really underrated. I can, I see a lot of people, like, if everybody says these episodes or that episode is underrated, it's probably not underrated, um... Uh, but I, I still put these in anyways, because even though a lot of people do like the episode, very few people genuinely love these episodes, um, which I think is a travesty, because they're like, they're kind of the episodes that really truly sort of make Series 3 and Series 5 my favorite seasons of Doctor Who. Um, you obviously, and it's mostly because... These two episodes are in seasons where there is just so much going on. There's so many good episodes. There's potentially even just some of the worst episodes. Well, not really here, but... Like, there's some of the best episodes in all of the show in these seasons that you forget about these two episodes. You forget Amy Stories exists after you've seen the finale and Vincent and the Doctor and all that stuff. Series 3 is just, like, it's surrounded... Just, the gridlock is surrounded by a lot of stuff, you know? Um, and it's, it, it, yeah, uh, another episode kind of like this, but I, I don't have it on the list, is the Under the, uh, Under the Flood, no, Under the Lake, Before the Flood two-parter from Series 9, uh, where it's kind of in the same situation, where it's just surrounded by so much stuff, it's like, you got the, the opening two-parter with Davros and, and all that stuff, you have all the Ashilder stuff, you have Face the Raven, you know, Clara's I'm not gonna say, um, you have, like, Heaven Sent, you have potentially the worst finale ever, um, but to some people it's not, and you have just so much stuff going on, you forget that two-parter exists, um, I didn't put them, put th those two episodes on the list because I don't like them that much, but <laughs> I just don't like Series 9 in general, so, um, yeah, so they're kind of in that same situation where there's, they're really special. They're like hidden in plain sight. They're hidden gems that are hidden in plain sight. They're amazing episodes. I love them both. Uh, some of my favorite episodes. Um, and yeah, so... <laughs> number eight then. And uh, now we're getting into the controversial stuff. We got the twin dilemma, my boys. Um, so, <laughs> twin dilemma. Um... I, just so you know, this was my first ever Classic Who episode, um, because I just heard from basically everywhere, the wikis, Facebook groups, just all the place, like YouTube videos all over, all over, that the Twin Dilemma was the worst Doctor Who episode of all time. And then I went to watch it, and I was like, if this is the worst episode of all time, I do not want to watch the best because that would just be, like, on another level. Uh, I didn't hate the Twin Dilemma at all. Sure, it's not the best. <laughs> like, the actual plot itself, with, like, the two twin adricts, right, because that, that's basically what I remember. Uh, it's been, like, two years since I've seen this, so I don't remember much. Um, it's basically, like, two adricts working for some kind of 
dude to do something. I think it was like pull a planet out of orbit. So like some Tim Shaw stuff. Um, so I don't really remember much of the plot, and obviously, kind of maybe is because it just was a really forgettable story. But the bits that are actually really good, and I think are great, is it's probably my favorite Doctor introduction episode because you get all of six in that episode. And also, it's just really fun. It's just, a re like, all of his scenes. He owns every scene in that episode. More so than I think any other Doctor did. Like, Castro Volta is the worst Doctor introduction episode. Mostly because Davidson is just so boring. And he just does nothing in that story. That you're just like, ah. Oh. But then on the flip side, doing the dilemma, Colin Baker is, like, going absolutely nuts. He's doing everything. He's doing everything. <laughs> Um, like the, the 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 scene, the controversial scene where he's uh, doing things to uh, to Perry, <laughs> you know that that obviously it has a, a reason. There's consequences in it. When you just put it out, pull it out out of context, it's obviously it obviously it seems worse than it is. But when you put it in the context within the episode, it's post regen stress. After he does it, he immediately regrets what he's doing and is like, you know what, I need to go go to this planet and just like be in solitude until I can forgive myself for doing this. Like, it may, you know, so, yeah. Um, it's just a really good Doctor Introduction episode. It does not deserve the, uh, the reputation that it has at all. So, yeah, so next episode, number, I believe this is seven, we got Boomtown. Um... Uh, so Boomtown is just one of those where it's like, especially after watching some reactions, uh, to Boomtown, um, it's just one of those episodes where it's like, it's good, but it feels like a lot of people don't get it, you know, like, I've seen some people just be like, why don't you just kill her? She's a bad person. First off, you know, that's not really what Doctor Who's about, so if you're, <laughs> if you're watching with that mindset... You're not getting the show in general, but also it's kind of like it's it's not just about her being a, like um, the Slovene being a bad person, which also is a contributing factor. It's the Slovene episode, people don't like it as well as they just don't like the Slovene. So obviously this episode is gonna get a bad rap, anyways. Um, but like people just don't get all the character stuff going on. They're really just looking at it from one way, and it's like. The, it's like they're just thinking the episode is just stupid because they're not trying to understand the layers going on. Um, and to be honest, I think it's kind of maybe a personal thing, you know. Like I feel like Hellbent is also a similar situation where I just think it's just uh, some of it is just really stupid, but is I'm just not trying to look at it from a different perspective. It's still bad, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Boomtown is also kind of low on the list because it's, it's not like one of those that people absolutely hate. You know, I see a lot of people praise Boomtown, so, yeah. So, yes, next up, at number six, we're gonna go through this quickly, is Rise of the Cybermen and the Age of Steel. Uh, you're probably wondering why. Well, again, from recent reaction videos that I've seen, as well as just kind of like a consensus, I feel like that's just randomly cropped up out of nowhere is a lot of people don't like this two-part. They think it's not very good. Um, they also, I think, a lot of people, because of this two-part, have started disliking the Cybermen. Which is a crime. It's just, it's it's, it's not fair. Like, people were just like, the Cybermen suck. You know, they were in that episode, and they sucked. And it's like, man, really? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the Cybermen in that were presented in a certain way to where you would just, you kind of, like, I, I don't know, it's like because they're such, like, slow moving, you know, just no emotions, I don't know, it's just a certain, I don't know, it just people don't like this two-parter and I just, I just don't get it, I don't get what happened, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, this was, I, I nearly put Nightmare in Silver here, but Nightmare in Silver is... I don't, I, I, again, it's kind of like Twin Dilemma and stuff. I never put it on here. I don't think it deserves the reputation that it has, but at the same time, I feel like Rise of the Cybermen is a better Cybermen story, and people are not liking that one 
probably even they're probably liking it less than Nightmare and Silver, but uh, we obviously most of them probably haven't gotten to it yet, so I wouldn't know. But anyways, number five, I think it is. Uh, we got the Lodger. Again, gonna just go through this quick. The Lodger, I love it. It's funny. <laughs> it's really hilarious. It's just a really fun episode just to go through. I don't get how people can just not like it. There's just I don't know. I don't. I don't get the dislike for this episode at all. It's just really fun. I'm not saying it's like the best episode. I'm not saying it's the best written episode. Uh, maybe it, well, it does have some really solid acting, but it's not like the best acting of all time. It's not like Midnight or like Human Nature levels of acting. It's not Heaven Sent levels of acting. But it's still it's 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 solid acting. There's no bad acting in it. There's no bad writing really. There's the music is good. The effects are good. Everything is relatively all right. The only n slight negative I have is, well, not even a, a I have, but just a slight negative I've seen from people that I agree with is how the whole it calling people and then the people just come into the house just like that. That's a bit eh, but I don't see it being just being like the whole episode sucks because of it, and that's like the only negative I see. So I don't. I get the hate from the lodger. Anyways, number four, and again, controversial, we got Warriors of the Deep. Um, not gonna go too in depth with this, but, uh, yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's really not that bad at all. It's not like the, it, again, it's not, it, the Twin Dilemma is not the worst episode of all time. Um, and I think it's mostly just because I really do like Classic Who. I don't tend to hate an episode of Classic Who. I don't think I've ever really hated an episode. The only one I really disliked was Castrovalva. Um, Castrovalva? Castrovalva? Whatever. Uh, that was the only one I was like, man, this sucks. <laughs> and it wasn't even really that this sucks. I was just like, what is go I don't... Whatever. Go away episode. Um, but yeah, I don't get the hate for Warriors of Deep. It's not... Again, it's not the best episode of all time. Not even close. It's kind of average, maybe even below average. But it's fine. I don't get the reputation. It just has a really bad effect. Bad, like, costume thing. Um, but there are reasons why that it looks potentially bad or, like, there's some bad like looking stuff is because of of reasons like budget and all that stuff kind of time constraints I think too so there's a reason it's like the Absorbaloff in Love and Monsters it looks bad because it was it was written by a kid so I'm I'm I'm, I'm willing to forgive it because of that um so yeah Warriors of the Deep is just I don't I, don't, I, I again I don't get the uh, the that the fuming hate or like just the people are just like this is garbage um, it's just a really watchable episode, which, for the most part, that's kind of Davison's run. Uh, besides, like, Earthshock and, like, Caves of Androzani and all that stuff, a lot of his stuff is really watchable, for the most part. Um, uh, and, like, Warriors of the Deep is just as watchable as something like Black Orchid, or, like, For the Doomsday, or The Visitation, or Time Flight, or whatever. So... Yeah, and also I just kind of like the Silurians. I think the Sea Devils are cool. The idea of the Merka is cool. You know, just this giant uh, sea lizard thing. That's cool, even though it looked d pretty bad. Um, but yeah, where's it a deep? Next up, I think we're at number three. Um, yeah, number three. I got Let's Kill Hitler. So, I'm not gonna go here and say that I don't understand the hate for Let's Go Hitler. Um, it's, you know, it's like you, you, you put the episode set in Nazi Germany. You know, not even like World War II England or like Occupied France. This is like the heart of all the problems. Nazi Germany. You got the man himself, Adolf Hitler, in the episode. You know, like, the greatest, one of the greatest villains in real life, basically. Um, like, just, one of the greatest villains in real life. Like, just, no, nobody really can compare to that guy, at least in modern history. You know, obviously, you have, like, your, uh, what was his name again? The, the Mongols, what was his name again? Mon I can't remember his name, but that guy, that Chinese guy that used to murder everybody, right? And, like, you know, Napoleon was kind of bad. 
Columbus was kind of bad. Everybody's been a bit bad, uh, but Hitler, I think, is just more recent, which is why we hate him as much as we do. And you have an episode set around killing him. Being like, we're going to go back in time, we're going to kill Hitler. In Nazi Germany. And the episode focuses not at all on that. It's literally just there as set dressing because of the river thing. And, you know, obviously the the, the point of the episode is it's a joke, right? Like, <laughs> hey, I, I, th this guy, he can time travel? Oh, well, I got a gun. Let's go kill Hitler. That's the whole point of why they're even there. If, you know. But at the same time, I don't think the episode would be what it is if it weren't set in Nazi Germany. There's just an element of the episode. Like, if you just set it in England, right? Just think about it. You just set... It, it would have worked perfectly if you just set it in, like, just normal, modern-day England. Or just somewhere. You know, just some undisclosed area. It would probably be a bit more forgettable. But because it's set in Nazi Germany, there's this extra level of... We're in Nazi Germany here, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. It, it, I'm not saying that's a good thing, that they sort of just made a joke out of it. Because um, it's going to offend a lot of people, right? The, the last thing you want to do is offend people, you know? Um, but, yeah, so... It, 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 it would have been more forgettable if it wasn't set in Nazi Germany. And besides that, I don't think the plot is bad at all. Like, I think, it's, uh, like the lodger, it's pretty alright. You know, it's it's kind of... It, it's, it's not like the best plot ever, but it kind of, you know, it does what it needs to do. Uh, it is kind of disappointing, because I think... When was it? It was like Impossible Astronaut, or like, um... Uh, what was it called again? Silence in the Library, you know, where, like, River was talking about... Oh, I, you know, the first time I met him, he knew everything about me, and it really, you know, messed me up and stuff like that. And then you don't really get that fight from the episode at all. Um, so, it, it is kind of disappointing as, like, that's the first time that the Doctor meets River proper. Um, and it's like the first time River actually shows up, really, because she regenerates into that form. But, <coughs> yeah, but I don't think it deserves the amount of hate it gets. Like, there's a lot worse in Series 6. <laughs> Then let's kill Hitler, you know, so, yeah. Anyways, next up, number two, we got the Android Invasion. Um, I love the Android Invasion with a passion. I, I adore that episode. That was, like, my favorite one of season 13, which is absolute sacrilege, and I notice, but it's amazing. I love it. It's really fun. It's just the most fun I've ever had watching Doctor Who. At least classic Doctor. It was just fun. It's like the Doctor's just beating everybody up. He's running all over the place. You got twists. You got turrets. You got that stupid eye patch thing, right? Which the eye patch thing is, I think, a lot of people's like big thing problem with this episode. I don't get why, because it's like the whole point of the eye patch was like they had some kind of hypnotic control over the guy. And then the doctor was convincing him out of the hypno hypnotic control. So then when he took off the eye patch, he realized what he was doing. And then he went to go revenge. Get, get revenge on him. It's kind of like, you know, the Sylvine and all that stuff. It's like, you, you're focusing too much on the stupid part of it, ignoring the smart part of it. So, that's the biggest problem people have with this episode, is the guy being stupid with an eye patch. Besides that, the episode is just really fun. It's really entertaining. As I said, lots of twists and turns. I adore the Android Invasion, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. And and people are like, it's like the worst se episode, the worst story of season 13, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I just don't, I don't get it. Anyways, number one, and uh, again, just going to go through this quick. It's uh, Smith and Jones at number one here because, just thinking about it, I was like, you know, I was, I was, I was just kind of thinking about Smith and Jones like a couple of days ago. I was just thinking, it was, it's just a perfect story. It's like one of those rare perfect stories, and it, it's, it's just really, like, I was just thinking about it because it, it always kind of just f falls out of your mind, which is why I have it at number one. Kind of just, you know, it, as I said, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, but with what it is, it's really perfect. Like, there's no problems with it, really. It, it, it's just really, just really, <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it. It's, yeah. 
Um, I was just thinking like I, I was thinking about like series twelve and having to do and stuff. I was like, man, this is just a really good episode. Um, and yeah, just it was like it was really solid, really just almost just a perfect story. Like there's it, it, everything works. It builds up everywhere. The comedy hits. Just everything hits. Martha is Martha, so obviously she's great. You know, like, ch n never a bad day with Martha. Tenet is great. The Dadoon are amazing. Just all of it is just really perfect. There's no problems with it. It's just, it flows by. It's a really good introduction. It does what it needs to do. And it, I, it, it just, a lot of people just forget that it exists. So, yeah, Smith and Jones. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one. Um, what are your top ten underrated stories? I want to know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.